right, coaches, welcome back to Big Drew World. I'm Coach Allen. Um, it's good to be here with you today. We have another episode sort of following up on what we ended with last week, which was defining your stance. We're going to talk today about three areas that I see that need the most correcting in stances, especially with young guys, okay? First one, and just, you know, how you can correct them. The first one being um, too much weight out on the hand. How can you see this a lot of times? If they have their hand out in their three-point, okay, you got the hand shaking a lot of times would be a good sign. I like to look for the heels, okay? I'll take my shoe off. See, I'm dedicated here, coaches. Okay, if you have a flat foot, okay, I like ankle flexion here when I'm looking at, okay, what their shoe, shoe looks like, what their cleat looks like. If they're like this, all right, we got no ankle flexion. We got way too much heat. Weight out on that hand, we're way overextended probably, okay? Now, I did talk about the Veer offensive line stance sort of being almost like that, almost like a um, defensive lineman stance, just not as jacked up. Um, but what can we do on that? We can pull him back, get him to a point of balance where there's more weight out on his feet because if he gets in that hand, it leads to our second problem, lunging. Okay, you ever had an offensive lineman their first step? If all their weight's out here on their hand, okay, all their weight's out here on their hand, they don't know what to do, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to lunge. Head's going to fall forward, okay? We've taken a big step over stride right here, and we're not able to gather ourselves. I like to gather myself and be able to still stay up the whole time. If I'm looking at the ground, all these are problems caused by overstriding and having too much weight out on the hand. Okay, so what I do, I take the weight back off the hand some. I reduce it to about 50-50, maybe even less. I like more weight on the heels. That's just me. Weight on the feet, that's just me. I'm a spread type of guy. That seems like our stance. Um, I pull the weight back a little bit, and then we work on short, choppy six-inch steps. We work that bird walk, that short, choppy six-inch step over and over and over, and we'll work first step drill over and over and over, and we're teaching them a short, choppy, six-inch step method instead of an overstride. Because if you overstride, you're going to be off balance when you make contact. Um, next point of emphasis I see a lot of times is if they have no weight out on their hands. You ever see a guy, he puts it down, and there's no weight out on his fingers, okay? His fingers are just there leaning. A lot of times I'll grab the kid's wrist. Um, I coach JV, man, I had to put a lot of kids in better stances. Um, so we'll take their wrist and put them further out and I'll just adjust them and take, I almost got to take their whole body and, man and maneuver it where we have a more balanced stance. Cause if there's too much, there's not enough weight out on the hand. Okay. A lot of times you'll also see in this scenario, their butts going to actually be too low. Okay. Cause just think about it. If you're in a stance, okay. And there's no weight on your hand, it probably means your hands too close. Um, Cause if it's out further, you're giving yourself a true tripod theory here. If it's there's no weight on your hand, you're just getting all your weight support from your legs, and you're probably gonna have to drop your butt low to too low to get into a stance. Okay, so it might be a catcher stance. I had to work there just before where we pull the butt up, get the hand out a little bit more. Okay, so those are just two different areas where you know whether or not I'm not having more are if I'm having more or less weight out on my hand, changes everything, okay? And then that also leads to our stride. Is it gonna be too long of a stride? I'm usually not bad with too short of a stride as long as we're not taking too many false steps. A false step being one where you pick up, put down, and you don't really gain anything about it. You don't gain advantage to, with moving a lot of scrimmage. You don't gain advantage with um, getting position on your man. You don't get in, gain advantage anywhere with lazy false steps. So we try to get them controlled. That's why we use that bird dog drill. That's why we go through walking. Okay. Just three quick little tips there. I know it's a quick little video series. Um, as we wrap up SOL stuff and everything around here, I'm going to be putting out longer content as the summer comes, as long as everything's good to go at home. I've been doing a lot of content from school here with this virtual year, but hopefully we'll see you all back in the summer. We're going to do a breakdown of spread offense. We're breaking down the Buffalo Bills. We're bringing down the Green Bay Packers. Um, of course, the Buccaneers and the Chiefs and seeing how their offenses can be applied to yours. And then uh, we have two more videos in our little pause takeaway series 
Um, one, I'm working with common problems with the squat, and one on, so you want to be a head football coach. I'm just talking about what all that entails, okay? So I will see you next time, coaches. Remember, if you want to, if you want to win games, you got to dominate in the trenches. If you want to dominate in the trenches, you got to remember that bigs rule the world. I'll see you next time, coaches.